Hi students, I am Ashwati from Department of Zoology, Bharat Madha College, Trikakara. So today we are discussing on the topic, the dentition in mammals. So before going straight into the topic, just let's uh, brush up what mammalia classes. So after the extinction of the dinosaurs around 70 million years ago, the mammals became one of the most prominent organisms on the earth. Today, they represent about 4,500 species around the world and have evolved into wide diversity forms. Be it a bat, whale or a monkey, they show wide radiations of mammals into nearly all the habitats, with their body suitably adapted to their habits and their behaviors. Mammals get its name from the mammary gland, which is used by the mammals to suckle their young ones. Mammals are warm-blooded animals, so they are called homeotherms, and therefore they are having high metabolic rate and the temperature remains constant throughout their life. Most of the species have hair, which takes over the protective function, just like the scales of fishes and reptiles, and also they provide the insulation for their body. Mammals process four-chambered hearts, which permits the efficient oxygen passage to the tissues of all, all the body. Different types of skin glands are present in the, this group, and they are sweat gland, oil gland, scent glands, etc. And mammalia, they are viparous organism, that is, they give birth to young ones which develop in the uterus. The development of the cerebral cortex is more extensive and complex in any other group. Therefore, it enables a mammal with high learning capacity as well as intelligence. Mammalia is divided into three subclasses, namely Prototheria, Metatheria and Eutheria. The Prototheria, they are commonly known as the primitive mammals, that is they are the egg-laying mammals, for example, the duckbill platypus or ornithorhynchus and the spiny anteater, which is known as echidna. The second classification is the metatheria. They are the pouched mammals. Uh, the examples are Tasmanian wolf, koala, etc. The third one is the eutheria. They are the true placental mammals and they include all the higher mammals which comes under the animalia. This eutheria is again classified into 16 suborders and they include terrestrial, uh, aerial and aquatic adaptation. Most of the mammals possess a true teeth and it is one of the most striking feature of the class mammalia. And the tooth is made up of dentine and it is protected by enamel on the outer side. Now coming to our topic, the dentition. Dentition is defined as a type, nature and arrangement of teeth present in the oral cavity of an animal. The type of dentition depends upon the food they eat and also the feeding habit of that animal. The tooth are modified parts of dermal skeletal material and it has been recognized that the tooth is compared with that of the dermal tentacles of the shark and they are having somewhat similar in structure. The teeth are unknown in the lower vertebrates as well as in the jawless vertebrates. The teeth are primarily employed by the animals for manipulation of food. In some species, they serve as an additional function of structures which are used for attack and defense. The most primitive function of the teeth is to hold the prey which is taken in their mouth. And also in some of most of the animals, they have been an efficient organ for cutting, grinding and for mastication purpose. Now coming to different types of teeth, based on their origin, the vertebrates are classified into two types of teeth, epidermal teeth and dermal teeth. The epidermal teeth are also derived from the epidermis as the epithelial conical projections. In lower vertebrates like fishes, amphibians and reptiles, they possess this epithelial, epidermal uh, teeth. In case of mammals, the type, this type of teeth is seen in whale or in aquatic mammals. Uh, example, the belly plate and the whale bone of the whales are, are having the ep modified epidermal teeth. Now coming to the second one, the dermal teeth or the true teeth, it is derived from the dermal tissues and they have undergone different change, uh, changes so that they form this true teeth. All the other mammals except the echidna possess the true teeth in their upper and their lower jaws. In these, the teeth have become so efficient that they are mainly used for cutting, chewing and for grinding purposes. In case of echidna, that is the spiny anteater, 
teeth is completely absent in them. Now coming to the structure of a teeth, in mammals the teeth is firmly fixed in a socket in a jaw which is this condition is known as thecodon dentition that is some portion lie within the jaw bone and some portion lie outside the jaw bone. A typical mammalian tooth consists of three regions a crown, a root and a neck region. The tooth is made up of dentine and is coated with enamel on the crown region and with cement on the root region. The gum covers the neck region that is found between the root and the crown region. The pulp cavity is present in, inside the uh, teeth and is covered with gelatinous substance and it possesses many blood vessels and nerves. And lining to this pulp cavity is a layer of cells which is known as odontoblast which helps in the nourishment of the teeth. Now coming to the peculiarities of the mammalian dentition, as I already mentioned, dentition shows several adaptive features and it depends upon the food they eat and their feeding habit. So they are classified into many. First one is thecodon dentition. As I already told, thecodon dentition means that the teeth is arranged or is embedded in a socket in the gum. Hypsodon dentition, it means that the incisors of the elephant as well as the rodent the pulp cavity remains open basally on the teeth and continues to grow throughout their life. It is also known as open rooted teeth. Next is brachiodon dentition. Here, in other animals like dogs and all, the pulp cavity becomes closed at a certain age so that the nourishment stops and the growth ceases. And therefore, it is known as closed rooted teeth. Next one is diphiodon dentition. Most of the animals or mammals uh, there are two successive sets of teeth. The first set of teeth is known as milk teeth or deciduous teeth which appear early in their lifetime. After few years these milk teeth shed off and they are replaced by a permanent teeth which, which uh, lasts throughout their life and often more the number of teeth that is a permanent teeth is more than that of the milk teeth. In certain insectivorous animals and aquatic mammals they show only one set of teeth and they are known as monophyodont. Next is heterodont dentition. The teeth in animals or mammals are differentiated in structure as well as function in order to suit the food and the feeding habits. And therefore there are four different types of uh, teeth in upper and the lower jaws. They are incisors, canines, premolars and molars. Incisors are the cutting teeth, canines are the slicing teeth, the premolars are the grinding teeth and the molars are all the mastification teeth. And coming to the description of them, first incisors. Incisors are seen in front, of, in front part of the upper as well as the lower jaws. Each tooth is having a single root and a single crown, that is with single cusp. The main purpose of them is for cutting, for biting and for cropping purposes. And they are having a sharp cutting edges for their crown region. Next one is the canine that is uh, found just near to the incisors. It has a single root and a sharp cutting crown region. These canines are used for piercing as well as for tearing the flesh and the foot particles. Next is the premolars. That is the canines are followed by the premolars. A premolar is having a double root with compressed crown with one or two cusps. They are normally referred to as interior grinders because they are used for slicing as well as for partial grinding purpose. The last one is the molar teeth. That is they are found next to that of the premolars and they have more than one root and more than two cusps. So they, they are developed as a uh, permanent teeth and the main function of them is for crushing and for mastification of food. The premolars and molars are collectively known as the cheek teeth and therefore there are different types of cheek teeth. First one is bunodont, that is the low conical cusps are meant for crushing in mammals which are having a mixed diet. Example, the monkeys, man and pigs. Next, second one is a lophodont dentition. Here, the cusps are connected by several transverse ridges, which are called lophos, and it is adapted to grind all sort of plant material. It is seen in elephants. The third one is selenodont dentition. That is, the molar teeth is present with a vertical crescent-shaped ridges, and they are seen in camel. The next one is brachiodont dentition. That is, molar teeth is present with low crown and short uh, root region. It is seen in cow. Next is hypsodon dentition. The molar teeth with high crown and short tooths are present. It 
it is seen in horse the last one is the cecodont tooth that is the cusps are having sharp cutting edges that is for tearing and for piercing fleshes it is mostly seen in the carnivorous animals in carnivorous animals there is a special type of teeth which is known as carnassial teeth that is they are having the upper uh, premolar and the first molar regions are very sharp and especially large so that it is acting as a blade for cutting purposes next coming to the relationship between the dentition and their feeding habits as we have already mentioned the insectivorous and aquatic mammals they are having a large number of teeth it can be up to 70 in number in each jaw and these are known as homodont dentition that is they are having a narrow and cone shaped uh, cone shaped teeth throughout their mouth region the function is to prevent the escape of the food which is taken in them in case of herbivorous mammal they are having short canines and well developed molar and premolars so that they uh, they use it for mas- mastification purpose the third carnivorous mammals they have canines which are long and well developed while incisors and molars are partially developed some teeth are absent in some species in true herbivorous mammals like rabbit the canines are completely absent similarly canines and the premolars are absent in rats and elephant a natural long gap which is found between the two types of teeth is known as diastema that is in case of rabbit we already mentioned it is being a true herbivorous mammal the canines are completely absent so the gap between the incisor and the premolars are known as diastema next in cows the incisors and the canines are absent in the upper region and this is an adaptation for the grazing mode of feeding next is a dental formula that is the mostly the number of teeth is fixed in each mammalian species the mammalian heterodont condition is expressed by the dental formula that is the number and the arrangement of each or different types of teeth in the upper and the lower jaw of the each species is known as dental formula it is expressed by using the initials i c p and m which stands for incisor canine premolar and molars while expressing the dental formula the teeth of the upper jaw are written in the numerator side and that of the lower jaw is placed in the denominator the number of teeth shown is in the formula is multiplied by the two so that it gives a total number of teeth present in that organism for example the dental formula of man can be expressed as i that is incisors equal to 2 incisors in the upper jaw and 2 in the lower c that is canine 1 in the upper and 1 in the lower premolars 2 in the upper and 2 in the lower and molars 3 in the upper and 3 in the lower jaw total makes it to 16 so that we multiply into 2 and we get 32 so the dental formula of man is 32 So for typical mammalian dental formula it is 3 1 4 3 that is the total number is 44 So coming to the origin of cheek teeth that is the premolars and molar there are two theories which was proposed one is the concrescence theory of the rose and second is the tritubercular theory of cop and osborn So most accepted one is the tritubercular theory of the cop and osborn while the concrescence theory the theoretical value has only been proved therefore it has been discarded it says that the molar tooth has evolved by the fusion of different number of simple conical teeth just like that of the reptiles so it was discarded the accepted theory is the tritubercular theory that was proposed by cope and the osborn here it says that the tri- uh, tritubercular molar tooth evolved from a simple conical reptilian type of teeth by the development of two or more cusps in the process of the development in this condition at the first three cusps arouse in a line and this type is known as trichodont pattern and then it becomes arranged in a triangular fashion that is by the rotation of these cusps this tooth might have been given rise to several different forms of the cheek teeth so coming to the importance of this dentition study it mainly helps in tracing the evolution of an organism it helps to classify an organism in their level of hierarchy and gives an idea of an approximate age of an mammal and also provides the clue to the diet of that mammal so just we can uh, recap what we have come through first dentition 
um, dentition is defined as a type, nature, and arrangement of teeth present the oral cavity of an animal. Based on origin, it is divided into main two: epidermal teeth and the dermal teeth. Then the structure of teeth it is having mainly three regions: a crown, a root, and a gum region. It is having a pulp cavity inner side, which is lined by odontoblast. Then the uh, dental formula. That is, the mammalian is having a heterodont dentition. That is, they have four different types of teeth: the incisors, canines, premolars, and molars, and they serve different purposes. Then the number of number and arrangement of different types of teeth in the upper and the lower jaw on the each half is known as the dental formula and the importance of the dentition, as I mentioned earlier. Thank you.